Hi, welcome to Flight Test, I'm Josh, and today we're gonna to be showing you how to build the Baby Blender. Now, if you guys haven't already watched a review on it, it is basically a 50% size version of the blender we used in the Will It Blend episode. Uh, but the nice benefit of it is it's very small, very maneuverable, flies great, and it's good for beginners that are just getting into four channels, all the way up to the guys that like aerobatics. It, it'll cover it all. Uh, it's not a hardcore 3D airplane, but it's just a plain fun to fly, and also very easy to build airplane. Now, there's two different versions. We have the swappable series version, and we also have a standalone version and on the plans both swappable and standalone uh, components will be listed in the plans uh, basically it's one part difference you either have your power pod or you have a firewall that fits in there all that will be available on the plans now the first thing you need to do though is download the plans and also build your power pod and what we're going to do is refer you to a different video for the power pod unit itself reason being is it'll give you step-by-step -step instructions the only difference is because this is flying off of a 370 to 400 size motor I'd suggest that you build a whole new power pod let the little 24 gram motor fly the other previous ones because we will go back with other designs for that size motor but for the bigger airplanes as we get uh, more along in your experience with flying and building uh, the 370 to 400 size will give us the ability to design more planes in the future the only difference is going to be the fact that you're not going to use a landing gear or the barbecue skewers to hold in your battery on this power pod so you're going to do every step except for those and you're ready to go so download your plans get your materials in order and we'll get started By this time, I hope you guys have your plans downloaded and your materials gathered, which will most likely be Dollar Tree foam board. For you guys across the pond, I'm sorry if there's no alternative Dollar Tree foam board. It's just readily available in America here, and it's very easy to use. So hopefully, you guys will be able to find a substitution. Worst case scenario, if you don't have a Dollar Tree foam board, but you do have Depron, you can always put tape where we're actually making our folds and our creases and utilizing the paper, and use that as the paper and get the same results. But what we're gonna start with, now that we have our materials, we have everything cut out, we're gonna go ahead and start with the wings. Now the wings are actually pulled off of dimensions because it's basically a 24 inch by a 14 and a half inch rectangle with gradation marks on both sides. Make your gradation marks and take extra special care to make sure your measurements are very accurate. Once you have the measurements on both sides of your uh, 24 inch rectangle, uh, connect those with the ruler. And those will be your guidelines for your spars, uh, your creases for your airfoil, also the bevels for the uh, uh, leading edge as well too. And uh, once you get those gradation marks made and your lines done, we'll go ahead and start by uh, making a center line where your leading edge is going to be. Make a halfway through cut uh, going down there. Only take your blade about 50% through the foam because we want to leave the paper intact on the other side of that. Once you got that, go ahead and take a popsicle stick uh, and simply on the, the three quarter inch separated lines where the wing's going to roll over, uh, simply just make a crease without puncturing through the paper and, and actually crease the edge of the paper so it has a dimple. That'll be a nice guide so when you go back and fold your wing, it'll actually crease on those lines and give you a nice controlled uh, airfoil there. If you don't have that and you just try to bend it, it'll, it'll crease all over the place and it won't be nice and straight and true. And you definitely want nice and straight and true when you're doing this. The next step will be to, uh, to do your your bevel on the far edge of your wing. Now this will actually, when it's folded around, be closer to the trail edge and it's going to enable the top piece of foam to actually melt into the bottom piece of foam really nicely so you have a nice crisp airfoil. And uh, we cut the longest possible bevel we can while not going through the bottom piece of paper. Uh, roughly three quarters of an inch to an inch back is great. Um, if you don't make it with the first cut or it looks kind of weird, don't worry about it too much because that's going to be going down against the bottom part of the wing. No one's going to see it. So make multiple cuts but ultimately get your foam cut back on a nice bevel, roughly about three quarters of an inch back uh, or a couple centimeters for the metric system. Once you've done that, go ahead and take a straight edge ruler and the area that's going to be creased for the top part of your wing, put that right at your reference lines and then carefully go ahead and bend up the wing uh, to make those creases on there. You don't have to go too far, you just got to establish a good crease on each one of those reference lines and that will enable the wing to actually fold over and give you a nice arc without uh, being too erratic. After you've gotten the bevel cut for the uh, trailing edge of your wing, which currently is at the front of your wing, uh, now it's time to cut your uh, bevel for the leading edge. And we're doing this to remove the foam material to give you a nice round uh, leading edge nose. If you try to crease it, it's just going to be a sharp, ugly leading edge, and no one wants that. This is a good way to make it nice and smooth. To do that, go from either six and a half inches back from your uh, leading edge of your, your board, or eight and a half inches back from your trailing edge of your board and you'll find the reference line we're talking about. Uh, it should be the reference line that you cut halfway through with your knife earlier in this process. Fold it back 180 degrees over top of itself and then just act like you're cutting a hinge but you're going to do that on both sides. You're going to basically take your knife at a 45 degree angle and uh, not go through the center folded piece of paper and cut a 45 degree bevel on the one side, flip over your whole entire wing and cut a 45 degree bevel on your next side. 
Once you've done that, go ahead and do a test fold and fold your wing around just to make sure that everything looks nice. Once you're satisfied with the fit and the way the leading edge looks and the way the trailing edge melts into the bottom uh, of the wing, it's time to make your spar. Now the spar is going to add two benefits. It's going to give you more rigidity in your wings and it's also going to give you a nice constant airfoil um, because when you fold your wing over and you glue it all together for the final time, um, that will actually be what determines the thickness of your airfoil. Uh, so by doing that, you're going to have a consistent airfoil and a consistent flying wing. Uh, if it's narrow on one side and fat on the other side, it may generate different types of lift and may not look as good or fly as good. So uh, go ahead and do this step and we do this by taking a 1 inch by 24 inches uh, piece of uh, foam board, just cut off of the excess from the wing and uh, we crease it down the middle or cut it down the middle which is at the half inch reference line and uh, fold it back on itself. Once you fold it back on yourself just put some glue in between those two pieces that fold over and that will make you a nice roughly half inch by half inch square spar made out of foam. Uh, once you've done that go to the reference marks that's two inches off of your uh, center bevel um, and put it to the leading edge side. So in other words, line up your spar and glue it uh, just in front of the two inch reference mark. Uh, by doing this, you're gonna be giving yourself the proper uh, airfoil. If you go too far back, the high point of your airfoil is gonna be too far back. It may not look as good or fly as good once again. I haven't tried it that way, but my guess is it wouldn't fly as good. So make sure you're very careful on putting the spar on the proper side of your reference line uh, when you glue it there. Once you're happy with that fit, do a final test fit and then put glue on the leading edge, top of the spar, and your trailing edge of your foam. And then fold it over and then use a ruler on the back trailing edge to hold consistent pressure on the back trailing edge to, uh, until the glue dries. That way nothing will lift up and uh, look awkward. Your first wing is now done. The next step is to repeat that same process to make your second wing. Once you've done that, the following step will be to simply mark out your ailerons. Now to make your ailerons, you're only going to want on the red part of the plans, uh, the red line on the plans, you're only going to want to go halfway through that. A uh, reason being is when you fold that back and cut your bevel, you want the paper to remain intact so you have actually a hinge there. If you go all the way through or make some mistakes, don't be afraid. You can always use tape to uh, adhere it on, but it's nice if you only go through the top part of the paper and not the bottom because your hinges will look all the better and make the process much quicker. So take your, uh, your X-Acto knife, go only halfway through the foam, fold it back, against the wing and then cut a 45 degree bevel not going through the center paper just like we've done on all our previous builds um, hopefully by now if this is the if you guys are following the swappable series you guys are a pro at this already uh, as far as the notch for the ailerons uh, just go ahead and knock that out area out completely that'll be drawn in black anytime you see black that means cut all the way through anytime you see red that means it's a hinge line or a pivot point for something else and you only cut halfway through the bottom wing and the top wing have different aileron markings, mainly because the way the servo on the bottom wing has to uh, reach to go to the actual ailerons themselves. Uh, if there's any wire and match the top wing, you'd have to use a torque tube assembly or separate aileron uh, servos, and we didn't want to add that much weight or that much effort. Uh, so we actually have two different styles of ailerons on the top and the bottom wing. Use those reference marks, mark out the bottom and the top, put in your lines on the bottom. Reason being is we're going to cut on those lines to make your hinges uh, and the bevels for your hinges and also to remove the material and then you don't see any pencil marks on the top of your wing mainly because the top wing does not get the ailerons removed unless you want some crazy roll rates. Well your wings are almost done the next step is to cut out your uh, your wing struts on the outer panels and that's going to be done off the pattern supplied in the plans. Uh, this is a pattern so you can just simply cut it out of the paper lay it over your foam board and cut it out. You're going to go ahead and need two of these. Now that you have your struts cut out the next is to go to the wing plans once again and use the reference measurements for where the struts are going to be going. Now when you cut through the top layer of the wing, you're not going to want to cut all the way through uh, through the bottom or through the spar. So simply just make your reference marks uh, mainly at the uh, trailing edge and then right where the spar is. And then go ahead and if you don't have a flexible enough ruler, you can use a simple trick by taking a really thin piece of balsa wood and going over the entire cord there. Once you've gotten all your reference marks made uh, and completed, uh, simply go ahead and cut that top layer of foam out, removing it, once again being careful not to go through the spar. Um, if you go through the spar, just make sure you add a little bit extra glue in there so the strut and the spar become one and it regains its strength uh, back there. It's not going to take too much strength away, but it's just a good idea. Um, fine tune that hole to make sure everything is nice and crisp and also that the strut meets the very bottom of the wing. If it's not on the very bottom of the wing, it's going to actually twist your top wing just slightly and that's not a good thing for flying characteristics. Uh, go ahead once you're happy with that fit, go ahead to the other side of your wing and repeat the process.
Well, by now you should have a wing with two struts fitted in it. And what you want to do is make sure that your top wing sits nice and flat on there. If you put your wing in and yet the wing rocks back and forth to go flush with either one of the struts, uh, one of your struts is not cut evenly or not on the very bottom of the plate. Make sure both wings sit down on the struts nice and evenly and that they don't rock back and forth and that everything looks nice and square and true. Do not glue it at this point though, because what you're going to want to do is save that if you want to paint your airplane. It's much easier to paint this in components and then assemble it afterwards. And also, once we build our fuselage, we're going to want to custom fit our fuselage because this is a removable wing uh, to the actual fuselage itself. So you can put this aside now and we'll go ahead and start the fuselage. And to build the fuselage, first start by using the patterns provided in the plans and cut out all your pieces. That would be your uh, tail, your rudder, your main fuselage piece. Um, you can cut out your turtle deck. Uh, the main front turtle deck is something we kind of form after we get the other pieces all in place because sometimes it changes depending on how you build it. Once you have your pieces cut out, take your power pod that you previously constructed and uh, Line that up to the reference marks made by the patterns there. Once you've test fitted your pod and you're happy with the way everything fits, take a barbecue skewer and just like we've done in every other steps, use the pointy end of the barbecue skewer to go right through the firewall hole marks on your firewall into the actual foam fuselage and go about an inch or so in there, you know, three centimeters for you guys with the metric system uh, while you're spinning the, the uh, area. That'll open up a nice size hole. Uh, once you've gotten that done, cut two roughly uh, inch and a half long pieces of barbecue skewer, put some hot glue in there and slide it in uh, and let it dry thoroughly. Make sure not to slide your barbecue skewers in too crooked um, or it may not line up with your uh, firewall when you uh, go ahead and test fit it. Once everything's dried, make sure that your power pod fits nice and square and true and uh, is lined up nicely and fastens in nicely to your actual fuselage. And then you're ready for the next step. The next step will be to uh, actually finish off and get your form to your fuselage. To do this, the first step you want to do is take a popsicle stick uh, and take your ruler on the back part of the trailing edge of where the wing is and put a slight crease in there, just like you did with your wings. This will give it a nice uniform area to fold on uh, and there will be a note on the plans for this. After you've gotten those creases done, go to the back part of your fuselage and just like you did on the top part of the trailing edge of your wing, cut about a half inch bevel, but this time only go about halfway through the foam. Don't go all the way to the paper. And the whole idea is actually reduce the thickness of the rear part of the fuselage to match up with the thickness of your rudder when you put it on. Uh, it's not detrimental that you do this, it's just a matter of aesthetics, so if you don't want to, you don't have to. But it just makes things line up really nice. So just cut a simple bevel on the back and make sure it looks nice. The next step will be to glue your fuselage together and, and get your uh, the form to your fuselage. To do this, simply put the glue in the cavity just like you did on the power pod. And also like the power pod, take the sides of your fuselage and put them over top of the bottom uh, plate of the fuselage that's sitting on the building board. Uh, by doing this, you're going to get the proper thickness that you need and everything will match up. So make sure that the format of your power pod matches the format of your uh, main fuselage that you're building currently and you'll be good to go. Now that your fuselage sides are glued firm and fastened and you're happy with the fit, test your fit your power pod once again just to make sure everything is good. Now would be the time to check it before going too much farther and then having to change anything, mainly because you can get your fingers in it right now. So once you have that done, go ahead and uh, where your popsicle sticks were used to crease that, uh, lay it on a building board. And if you don't have a building board like ours with actual grids on it, uh, just draw a simple straight line on a piece of paper or use a piece of tape that's in a nice straight line to give yourself a reference line. It's very important that's perfectly straight because you're going line up the center point of the fuselage and that will also carry all the way back to the tail and give you the location on where you need to join your tail. If you do this without and just try to sight it, oftentimes you'll end up with a fuselage that kind of twists off to one direction and you certainly don't want that. It messes everything up as far as your turtle deck, your way your rudder goes on, um, everything is kind of thrown off because of that. So take great time to make sure that it's glued center on a center line. Now that our fuselage is formed, the next step will be to uh, bevel the hinge lines on our tail on our elevator and install them and also install the skid plate. To do so, we're going to just like the previous uh, planes we built, we're going to go ahead and put a simple uh, score line going halfway through the foam on both the tail and the rudder and then fold it back on itself 180 degrees and cut a 45 degree bevel. Uh, after this on the tail, you're going to want to glue a popsicle stick down just to give some extra rigidity because the push rod's only being pushed on one side of the elevator. You want that torsion and be able to be carried over to the other side of the elevator without distressing the foam too much. So the popsicle stick works wonderfully to do this. Uh, once you're happy with the motion and everything, draw a center line on the bottom, uh, which is in other words the side that was beveled of your elevator 
and then line that up just in the same manner that we did with the fuselage uh, on a center line. You can use that piece of tape that you used earlier or make a new one or just use a grid board like we use. But line your fuselage on that center line, carry it all the way back to the center line of your tail, and then once you're happy with the fit and everything looks good, mark the outside cheeks of the uh, fuselage onto the tail. Remove your uh, tail, put glue down, and then go ahead and reinstall and hold that there until it's nice and securely dried. If it doesn't seem like it's too strong, just put another little bead of glue on each side until you're happy with the fit. Go ahead and check perpendicular, and you should be good to go for the rudder. Now to install the rudder, first slide the rudder onto where the elevator is, and then make your marking where the elevator intersects with the rudder. Once you got that marking, lay it flat and find the depth of the actual throat that goes across from elevator to elevator, and mark that as well. Once you've done that, cut a basic pie shape out of that, going back as far, and then test your fit. If your elevator doesn't move freely up and down and your rudder left and right, then go ahead and trim until you're happy with the fit. Once you're happy with the fit, simply make a center line on the top part of your elevator, and then line your rudder up with that, and then make another reference line to, uh, to make your uh, glue. Lay your glue down on the center line, put your rudder back on, and then use a square to make sure everything's 90 degrees. Once you're happy with the fit, let it dry, apply some extra glue if you need, and then simply flip the whole uh, fuselage over and cut a little bamboo skewer for the very part of the rudder. You'll notice that it's recessed up about an eighth of an inch. That's for a little bamboo skewer. We didn't put a wheel back there because we didn't want the side forces to be on the rudder, and also we wanted to save weight because a stocky plane like this needs as little weight as possible back by the tail. Glue that on, put a piece of tape for your hinge on the bottom, and you're ready for the next step. Well, now your tail feathers are on, your fuselage is starting to really take form. The next step will be to take your uh, fuselage turtle deck formers that were on the plans, or I should say patterns, and uh, cut them out if you haven't done so already. And then you'll notice that there's two ones or two formers that are different. That'll be the lead one right by the nose and the back one by the rear turtle deck. The two center ones are the same. Be very careful when gluing these together to make sure you have them in the right order. Uh, the front turtle deck nose former is just slightly longer to accommodate for that drop in the fuselage when it was folded. So uh, be careful with that. If you do it wrong, when you wrap the uh, poster board around the turtle deck, it's going to leave a big old hump in the middle and you won't be able to glue everything together. Uh, once you're happy with that, use the reference marks uh, that were on the plants, carry them over over to your fuselage and uh, connect the lines and then simply glue your formers right on top of the lines uh, or on one side or the other. It doesn't really make a big difference as long as your front one's uh, flush with the nose and your rear one is flush with the rear part of the horizontal part of the fuselage. Now that we have our formers in, the next step will be to put on our rear turtle deck. Now to do the rear turtle deck, we do have a pattern uh, for you to cut out on the plants. Simply lay that pattern over a piece of light poster board. Now in the past with the big blender, we used heavy duty poster board. Problem is, is when you get that after CG, a little bit of weight goes a long way. So simply use the uh, normal style 50 cent a sheet uh, big poster board. Now when you get your poster board, it bends uh, easier in one way than the other. That's because paper has a grain to it. So go with the way that the poster board bends the easiest. That way the strong part of the grain will actually give you rigidity in between your formers. If you go the other way, it'll tend to pucker a little bit more if you're not careful. Ultimately, it's just, it just comes down to aesthetics. There's nothing functional about this, but cut out your pattern in the way that the grain runs longwise so that it'll bend the easiest around your formers. Line up your formers and decide what kind of bevel you're gonna need on your rear part of your turtle deck former to cut. So it actually meets flush on the very top of the part. If you don't cut a bevel to the very top of the uh, turtle deck uh, former, it will end up causing a gap to be there that you'll either have to fill in with hot glue. It won't look very nice. So just take a simple sharp razor blade, chew out a little bevel in there, and make it so that the actual uh, top part of the turtle deck will fit nicely. Now, if your turtle deck does not fit, simply make some adjustments, cut out a new turtle deck, because everyone that builds are going to have formers in a slightly different way. But if you build it as close to the plants as possible, it should fit right in and look really nice. Once you're happy with the fit, Take a ruler down and go about a quarter of an inch in or roughly where the rear part of the turtle deck it has to make a hard bend to go around your fuselage back by the tail. Uh, take that area, take your ruler down, lay it, and then fold it up to about a 90 degree angle. That's going to make your poster board bend easier and give you the ability to, to line things up even nicer. Once you're happy with the fit, make reference lines on both sides of the fuselage um, where your turtle deck's going to be. And then take one piece of tape on one side and put it down on your turtle deck. Line it up the turtle deck with your markers on the a fuselage, tape it down, and you're ready to hot glue all the way around your turtle deck, wrapping the, the poster board over your former as you go. 
go all the way to the other side, hold it till it's dry, and then simply take another piece of tape and tape the other side down, and you're ready for the next step. Now that the real turtle deck is done, it's time to do the front turtle deck. And it's very simple, it's the same process as used before. We're gonna take a pattern, we're gonna find the poster board with the grain going in the proper direction so it bends the easiest going around the formers. And uh, we're simply gonna cut out the pattern, uh, lay out our reference marks, uh, as we try to fit the turtle deck onto the paper or onto the fuselage. Once you're happy with the way the turtle deck fits onto the fuselage, make your lines on the fuselage and also a couple reference lines on the turtle deck. Just like the rear part of the turtle deck, we put the tape on the front part of the turtle deck, we're going to tape it to the side of the fuselage and then put a bead of glue on each one of the formers and then pull it over top and then uh, hold it until it's dried. Once it's dried and we're happy with it, we'll finish the job by putting a piece on the other side of the turtle deck on uh, against the fuselage. Uh, go ahead and check for fitting. Uh, trim with a razor blade your front, front firewall if you need to do so at all, and uh, make sure you're happy with it. If you don't like it, you can always cut the tape and try to reposition a little bit, but take your time and make sure this is done right. Now the nice thing is, say there's a little gap here and there or it doesn't quite fit right, if you paint your fuselage afterwards, the tape is actually gonna seal uh, any holes or any gaps or any unsightly uh, uh, variances that may otherwise be ugly to the eye. So don't fret too much, just make sure that your turtle deck is nice and smooth in the way you want it. Okay, well the airframe is all done. The next step, if you wish so, is to paint it. With the plane being all in pieces like this, it's far easier to lay out your design and your components without having to mask off things like servos, motors, uh, control linkages, etc. So if you wish to paint it, now would be the time to do so. I know for me, I want to put some color on it. All right, well, she's all painted. It only took about 20, 30 minutes worth of work. For you guys out there, whenever you get ready to put your radios on and the plane is in its final stage before you start assembling it and make it bigger, it's always easier to take that time now and paint it. Once you put the electronics in, it's always harder to mask them off, and also the paint job doesn't look as good. So, if you want to paint this, right now is the time to do it. But now that we have it painted, it is time to uh, cut the reliefs in our wings and do the final assembly on the wings. Um, the wings are removable. Uh, you can choose to glue them in if you want, but with the swappable style, it is much easier just to pop off the wings with two rubber bands, put on your main swappable cartridge or uh, power pack, and then put your wings on. Also, if you wreck it, you can pick a new set of wings very easily and uh, put it back on. But you're going to find this plane is very resilient. All right, the first step we're going to do in preparing the wings to mount to the fuselage will be to actually center up the fuselage on the trailing edge of the wing. Once you've done that and you're happy with that, go ahead and make some light pencil reference lines. Also use a square to make sure that your lines are nice and perpendicular to the trailing edge. You don't want your fuselage to be mounted crooked and this will depend on how the wing sits on your airframe. Once you've gotten nice perpendicular reference lines, go ahead and cut through those lines, being careful not to go through both layers of foam or the spar. Only go through the top layer of foam that is actually wrapping around on the top surface of the wing. Uh, going through the spar or through the bottom layer of the wing will cause it to be weakened and you're going to have to reinforce it somehow. So only go through the top, take your time to make sure that you're feeling around the spar. When you hit the spar, lift up your blade, go around it, and then back down to the leading edge. Once you've gotten both those lines cut out, go ahead and move your line in, the thickness of the foam, because that's where your fuselage is going to notch down through, and remove the rest of the material. Once you're happy with those two lines, just cut a little notch, pull up the foam, and pull it out so you have a nice slot on both sides of your fuselage where your fuselage will sit in, and the fuselage will sit down nice and neat. If you need to trim a little bit more, go ahead and do so now. Once you're happy with the fit, push your top of your fuselage down to the point where it's going to meet with the top spar. Once you found where it meets the top spar, oftentimes it'll crush down a little bit on the foam. Make some reference marks and then cut a relief area in the sides of your fuselage so that the whole wing uh, sits up into the fuselage with uh, no gaps and uh, no angles that you have to worry about. After you're happy with the fit with your fuselage to your bottom wing, you're ready to finish off the wings. And what you're going to want to do is take your struts and uh, test fit them. Make sure that they fit firmly on the bottom layer of foam. Once they fit firmly on the bottom layer of foam and you're happy with the orientation, in other words, the centering to the uh, wing cord, go ahead and glue those down. Make sure you have a good, strong glue joint. I like to put glue on the bottom layer of the foam, then also go back and then put a, a nice bead of glue between the uh, strut and the bottom of the wing. That way you have a nice, strong glue joint, because this is going to be what holds the top wing on and uh, keeps the rigidity on the whole wing airframe. Uh, once you're happy with that, let that dry. And then go ahead and test fit your top wing. Make sure that when you set your top wing down, that the wing does not rock back and forth. If it rocks back and forth, then most likely your struts are glued on crooked. You're going to need to make some fine adjustments to actually take that slop out so your wing isn't twisted when you glue it in. Now, one thing that you didn't see in this video that I'm going to put in is in the plans, you're going to have actually a tab that goes on the top of the strut to the bo uh, bottom of the top wing. Uh, that'll help you with orientation so you don't have to take any reference measurements. You'll simply be able to tab it in. And to glue your top wing onto your struts, 
Take your top wing and flip it upside down on the building table. Go ahead and align the tabs and then physically push them in uh, to make sure that the wing fits nice and square and true. Once you're happy and then the two leading edges uh, of the wings are parallel to each other, go ahead and uh, put some glue down and uh, glue your uh, struts to the top wing, making sure that you keep the orientation of the top wing and the bottom wing and keep those leading edges nice and parallel. Once the glue is dry, you're next for, ready for your next step. Our next step is going to be to uh, to mount the wing to the fuselage. Uh, before you do so, do a test fit of your fuselage to your wing. Make sure you're very happy with the fit. Make sure everything's perpendicular. Make sure that your wings and your surface of your uh, elevator is also parallel as well too and that you're just generally happy with the way everything is. If you're not happy, go ahead and make those adjustments now. To mount your wings, take the marks uh, on the plans that show where the dowels are located and transfer them to your fuselage if you haven't done so already. Uh, then go ahead and line the inside of the fuselage sides with extreme packing tape or some kind of corded tape that's reinforced. This will keep the dowels from pulling through the fuselage over time and just give it some rigidity. Um, then take your barbecue skewer, which we love to use, uh, make a mark individually. Don't try to uh, push it through and push through the other side, line it up. Go ahead and make four points uh, going on those marks. That way you're guaranteed to get those uh, dowel rods exactly where you want it. Uh, pull the dowel rods through, cut them off with about a half of an inch on each side or a centimeter for you guys with the metric system. And uh, then go ahead, put your wing back on and then just simply rubber band it and make sure you're happy with the fit and you're ready for the next step. Well friends, it's now time for the servos and the electronics. To do the electronics or the servos, uh, what you're going to want to do is uh, simply go to the reference marks made by your plans for the servo holes. Uh, cut out those uh, three servo holes and for you guys to know out there we're using 9 gram Hextronic or Turner G9 uh, servos, but any 9 gram servo will be phenomenal. I wouldn't go much smaller than that because you are going to be throwing some pretty extreme throws and you don't want to take a chance of stripping out of gear on one of these. So 9 gram servos, I can carry the weight, don't worry about it. Um, cut out your holes, test fit your servos, and we we use a little speed clevises. Now in this application it's very very useful because it's not a very open area and you don't want to be trying to get a z-bend inside the cockpit and uh, frankly my thumbs are too big so by the speed clevises they're very very useful they're very user friendly and you have infinite amount of adjustability and especially with this being a swappable you can make this so you can take your power pod from one plane to the other and all of them are going to be the same so go ahead and order those if you don't have them already once you have your speed clevises installed install your servo arms onto your servo taking special care to the orientation in other words you're going to want the uh, rudder servo to have the arm going off to the right going to the right side of the rudder uh, by doing this and keeping it consistent through all your swappables you won't have to do any servo reversing on any of your power plants. You can simply just slap it on and go fly and have fun. The elevator of course is on your left and the aileron simply sits on the bottom uh, of the wing. There's no really orientation you have to worry about because one arm goes to each aileron. Uh, once you're happy with the fit go ahead and glue those in and you're ready for your next step. The next step will be to uh, simply transfer the push rod path going through your formers uh, back to your tail. Now there's really no way to put this on the plants because everyone's build is going to be a little bit different. But what I like to do is just take a little square cut piece of foam and actually use that as a gauge to transfer where the imaginary push rod would be through your formers. Now it's really easy because once you just put a little razor uh, mark, you can just simply take something like an Allen wrench and drive it through, making a slightly bigger hole than what you need. The nice thing about these formers is it will hold the rod rigid so you don't have to do any extra reinforcement. So you can actually use a fairly thin push rod. Uh, we actually use O. Uh, 0.81 millimeter push rod which is very thin very light and on a plane like this you want to keep as least weight in the back as possible. Uh, run your push rods through cut it with a little bit of excess to spare. You can always trim it later once you get your servos all centered up and everything fastened down. Once you're ready for that next step will be to take your servo control horns of choice and uh, install them so your holes on your control horns are right on top of your hinge line. If you go one way or the other, you're not going to have even throws both ways. Once you've installed your control horns, move your push rods back and forth, making sure that the control is nice and fluid and there's no binding. Once you're happy with that, go ahead and move to the next control surface and then your ailerons. The process is all the same for all three of them. Well, friends, we're on the home stretch. The next step is to put the landing gear on the airplane. But first, got to create it. And to do that, we're going to measure a 2 millimeter rod, uh, 15 inches long, or also uh, 38 centimeters uh, for you guys with the metric system out there. Now, the important thing with doing this, I'm going to have on the plans a three-view drawing of the landing gear. But the easiest thing to do is to measure your total length, 
and then get the center section bent. In other words, in the 15, it'll be seven and a half inches. Bend that to the angle that matches the plants. Next up will be to do your two legs of your landing gear. Those will roughly be the remainder of it. So two and a half inches out from the center section, you're gonna to wanna to bend it. After you do that, go ahead and take time to straighten it out and make it match the three of you. Uh, do this and lay it flat on a building board. If your legs are crooked and uh, everything is kind of whopper jawed, uh, keep bending until it looks the same way as the three of you. Once you're happy with that, you're ready for your next step, which will be to bend where the wheels install. And that's roughly an inch or two and a half centimeters. Uh, lay it down a flat building board once again. Keep bending and tweaking until you're happy with the fit and it matches the plants and you're ready to install it. Now to install it, you simply lay the wing uh, upside down so you work on the bottom of the wing and uh, make your marks just in front. The point should almost touch the actual servo. It's very, very close. Simply take a uh, drill or a punch, poke a hole through both surfaces of the wing, and then keep in mind on the top side of the wing, we're gonna actually have a, a balsa wood stick or a popsicle stick for reinforcement. So go about a centimeter or half of an inch in spacing forward. And then likewise, in the front legs, uh, we're gonna actually have our zip ties, instead of going across in a perpendicular matter to the wire, we're gonna actually go in, in line with the fuselage. So put your reference marks behind the fuselage inside the area that's gonna be uh, zip tied and then carry those lines in front of the landing gear. Uh, keep in mind that you're gonna have a popsicle stick size reinforcement on the top of the wing. Uh, once you've gotten that, slink uh, your zip ties through. I like to go with the uh, knuckle of the zip tie on the inside of the fuselage just for looks. Um, it takes a little bit extra finagling, but it is worth doing it because the aesthetics look much, much nicer. Uh, snake it down through, put your landing gear in place, snake the zip ties around on the top, and then simply cinch it tight and you're ready to go. Well friends, you are now officially done. The only step left is to install your power pod that hopefully you either built or you're taking from another airframe. Uh, just remember for this one, the power pod does not have the landing gear or the barbecue screws on the bottom, and it also has a bigger motor. Now it will fly off of the smaller motor you've been using, but it'll really work it hard. I'd strongly recommend to get the performance out of this plane that you go ahead and go with a bigger motor, between 370 and 400 size. Now. For the final step, what you're going to want to do with the aileron servos is going to be putting an extension on your receiver and tracing that down through where your battery lead is. Uh, leaving your wings off, you're going to want to simply connect your rudder and your elevator servo, taking them in front of the front dowel rod that mounts your wing. If you go ahead and go straight down into your power pod, when you go to slide the power pod in, it'll actually snag that dowel rod and you do not want that. So take it in front, make your connections on your receiver. I actually mount my receiver with Velcro because that way I can simply detach it and then reattach it to the power pod whenever I need. Uh, once you're happy with uh, where your uh, servos are plugged into, refasten to your power pod, slide it in, and then on the plans there's a mark where the uh, dowel rod that holds the rear part of your power pod into the fuselage. Simply go ahead and slide your dowel rod through that, through your power pod, and out the other end. Now, if it's in a slightly different place, do not fret. Just simply take some extreme packing tape and line your power pod in that area so that hole is reinforced. Uh, once you're happy with the fit there, go ahead and install your wings, take your servo extension and your aileron servo and connect those and you're ready to go. Last thing is turn on, power everything up, make sure that your balance is good, and then also make sure all your control throws are the same. Sometimes if there's a, a difference in the previous model, it may not carry over the exact same. So make sure that your ailerons, elevator, and rudder all swing the proper direction. And then also you're happy if you have any dual rates or expos that you're good to go. Now dual rates and expos, I do fly 100% and 30% expo, then 70 and 30. And if you have a third place, uh, 65 and 30 is a really nice setting. It's borderline a trainer at those lower settings. It's really, really docile in the air. As far as the CG goes, uh, we'll have that marked on the plans, transfer that measurement back, and make sure your CG is good. With where the battery is located, you can go anywhere from a 1000 milliamp all the way up at the nose to a 2200 right underneath the CG, and the plane will balance out and fly beautifully. Well friends, we're down to our last step, and that is to test fly it. Um, but first I want to do thank some people. I want to thank you guys for watching this episode, and I want to challenge you to build this airplane. It's a really easy build, although it looks kind of advanced. Uh, it will carry along with your building experience if you've been following the Swappable series, and also your flying ability too if you've been following along with the different different build uh, designs. But I also want to thank Stonecap Productions for sponsoring this episode. And I want to thank Hobbico for sending us some great products like this Fataba 8FG. Uh, the more I use it, frankly, the more I like it. Um, the features, the uh, versatility is just amazing. But for right now, I want to go out and fly this beautiful thing. So that's what we're going to do.